Before we get into today's show, let me tell you about HubSpot. If you're hustling in the trenches to build a business or bootstrapping one of your own, let's talk about an AI-powered tool that can lighten up your workload a bit. HubSpot's campaign assistant is a game changer for creating marketing campaigns at scale. It quickly turns your key selling points into a cohesive pitch, which helps you deliver knockout emails, ads, and landing pages in minutes. So let campaign assistant take care of the campaigns so you can get back to growing your business. Work smarter, not harder at HubSpot.com slash campaign dash assistant. Good morning, everyone. It's Friday, July 7. I'm Juliet Bennett-Riley here with Ben Berkeley, and you're listening to The Hustle Daily Show. Today, we're going to talk about why bad beer names are sometimes the best beer names. But before any of that, let's talk about what else is happening in the world of business and tech. OpenAI's new super alignment team will try to control super intelligent AI systems and prevent them from, quote, going rogue. Uh, That is super relaxing for those of us who are worried about a Skynet future, but okay. Claire's has decided to forgo its IPO for now, citing current public equity market conditions. As you may recall from previous stories, the chain declared bankruptcy in 2018 and closed 189 stores, but has since rebounded due in part to a shift away from malls, partnerships with other retailers, and interest from younger shoppers. You may also remember that something like 14 years ago, video game developer Rovio came out with Angry Birds, which became a mobile gaming sensation. Now, Sega is acquiring the company for around $776 million, and for some reason, Rovio is opening an Angry Birds cafe in a mall in Queens. It's in a food court, and it'll have VR games and desserts, so that's cool. Meanwhile, JetBlue Airways has agreed to nix its partnership with American Airlines per a judge's order. The partnership lasted for three years and allowed the two airlines to pool revenue on coordinated flights. JetBlue really wants the U.S. Justice Department to stop blocking its $3.8 billion merger with Spirit Airlines, but we'll see how that goes. Volkswagen will test its self-driving EVs in Austin, Texas this month. Initially, the vans will have human drivers for safety and only operate in geo-fenced areas. Assuming that goes well, Volkswagen wants to expand testing to four or more U.S. cities over the next three years. And finally, in Indonesia, couples can score a wedding package from McDonald's that includes 100 chicken burgers and 400 nuggets. This will cost you about $233, that's in U.S. dollars, for a discount of about $70. However, that does not include the cost of actually having your wedding at McDonald's. So if you were hoping that you could get married in a ball pit, maybe price that out first. All right, Ben, do you have a favorite beer? Uh, You know, beer kind of makes me sick. Okay, fair. So there is that. Probably the bad <laughs> choice to join you on this episode. All right, all right. One of my favorite beers, and you know what? I don't drink this anymore because it also kind of makes me sick. I guess <laughs> that's what happens when you're not 21. Mm-hmm. I have this beer that I like. It's a peanut butter milk stout. Maybe that's why it makes me sick. Oh. From Belching Beaver. Great. That's the name of the brewery. Yeah. And, you know, it's one of those kind of beers. It's like, it's it's got a lot of flavor. It's pretty heavy. You would only have a little bit, I think, unless you, you're really, really impressive. The name Belching Beaver, you know, it's not super appealing. The idea of someone belching, a beaver doing it would probably be cuter than a, a person. And the thing is, you would assume though, that customers would not want a Belching Beaver. They would gravitate toward products with aspirational names. But it turns out that Belgian beaver is actually a great name for a brewery because customers gravitate toward beer with negative names. Huh. I mean, this is definitely a thing. I feel uh-huh. like if you look across the average beer aisle, you're going to find a couple of things. They don't necessarily make you feel good inside, but they sure grab your attention. And I'm really interested in what this study is that you found that gets into this. Yeah, so the study analyzed data from beer review site Beer Advocate between 1996 and 2012. That's kind of like craft beer's big taken off years. And found that when it comes to craft breweries, and those are defined as making 6 million barrels or less per year, beers with names that would typically elicit negative emotions have stronger consumer appeal. I guess the question is like, where did this come from? Because I feel like when you're really watching a lot of beer ads, especially growing up so much is like, it's light and it's crisp and it, you know, goes down smooth, all these different things. (laughs) Exactly. I feel like 
you know, you're trying to conjure this specific thing. Mm -hmm. So where did this come from? So Olga Casino, who's a professor at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, I actually talked with her a little bit over email, and she is one of the co-authors of this study. Basically, it has to do with this idea of authenticity. So according to The Atlantic, by 2012, Anheuser-Busch InBev and Miller Coors, you can even tell by the names of those companies, had gobbled up so many other smaller brands that they controlled 90% of beer production. So lots of mergers, just like, I'll buy that, I'll buy that. Okay, so you have these two big beer companies, they're making almost all the beer in the world. And the craft beer movement for both consumers and brewers kind of flew against mass production and instead embraced this sense of authenticity. So when brewers come out with names like Ugly Pug or I Hate My Boss Coffee Stout or Arrogant Bastard, even some of these may not be independent anymore. They may have been gobbled up by these companies. Those names reflect that independence. So it's kind of going against the grain. It's not super cool party beer that you have with bikini models, which I feel like is every Coors Light ad that I saw growing up. Yes, It's kind of like I'm my own person kind of beer. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, I guess as this is going on in the beer industry, I know that we've seen a lot of consolidation also Mm -hmm. across other categories, wine and and spirits. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's kind of also a thing in this space. Yeah. So I actually asked about that and Casina said it's not as common, but she definitely could point to some wines and distilleries that had products like that. One wine name was a Sauvignon Blanc called Cat Pee on a Gooseberry Bush. Appetizing. So there you go. Dirty Water Distillery, which is a great name in and of itself, has a Bog Monster gin that I would 100% drink because I talk about Bog Monsters a lot for some reason. But basically those craft movements started later than the beer movement. So it may just be a matter of scale at this point. That makes a lot of sense. And one thing that I asked her about was cannabis because I have noticed that a lot of strains just have really weird names like Unicorn Poop or grandpa's breath. And she was like, yeah, you know, both of them have ideologies that are in opposition to something. For craft beer, it's these big beer brands taking up everything, mass production. For cannabis, obviously, it's still federally illegal and people have been prosecuted over it for years. And basically what she said was strong oppositional identity demands authenticity and expression and behavior and encourages rebellious, that is counter normative attitudes and actions with which negative naming of products strongly resonate. So there you go. Fascinating. I mean, I guess this is something where I want to say that it it checks out. Mm -hmm. It like it's something that like I'll see something. I remember being home in Arizona and seeing something called Head Harvester, and I was like, "It's just telling a story." Yeah, maybe not one I want to personally be a very active part of telling. Was this like like a Sleepy Hollow like harvesting human head? Like what what context is this? I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, it was a pumpkin ale. Oh, so it was kind of like a Sleepy Hollow. Yeah, it's a little bit of a, it's a cute little pun, yeah. but also terrifying. Mm, yes. But it worked. And I can tell you that's probably one of the only names that I recall from years ago on a menu. So not only obviously are they kind of connecting these dots with this independence and this authenticity, mm-hmm. they're also just really sticky. Yeah. And I mean, I was even thinking about like liquid death, which is water (laughs) and (laughs) seltzer. And, you know, it's very not metal, but yet they have branded themselves like a metal brand. I see them constantly at at shows and at like spooky Mm -hmm. events. They just uh, appeal to a certain crowd. And I know as somebody who is often a label shopper, like if I'm going to a party and it's like, I got to bring a bottle of wine or a six pack. A lot of times I just go by the label, like what looks cool and yeah, I totally fall into this trap. If I saw a cat pee on a gooseberry bush, I am 100% bringing that to the barbecue. Absolutely. And then feeling really sick after the barbecue, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, probably because I probably had way too much mac and cheese and washed it down with way too much cat pee. Yeah, it's just a bad scene. <laughs> well, we'll do a, a future episode on lamenting that we're not in our 20s anymore. Mm, yes. It was nice waking up not feeling terrible after even just wondering. Yeah, we'll have Jacob on and he can tell us what it's like to be in his 20s. Love that for him. We'll we'll reminisce. All right, that's going to do it for us today. Thank you for tuning in to the Hustle Daily Show. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Robert Hartwig and our executive producer is Darren Clark. We've got a lot more tech and business coverage in our newsletter. If you're not subscribed, go get yourself signed up at the hustle.co slash email.
Let me tell you about a show that I've been loving lately. It's called Entrepreneurs on Fire. It's hosted by the incredible John Lee Dumas. It's available now on the HubSpot Podcast Network. Entrepreneurs on Fire stokes inspiration and shares strategies to fire up your entrepreneurial journey and create the life that you've always dreamed of. I'm a big fan of this podcast. It has energy, it has value, and it's all about learning about entrepreneurship. I was just listening to an episode the other day. JLD interviewed Jay Rogers, who was such a wealth of information. He kind of went into how entrepreneurship chooses you. You don't necessarily choose it. And that failure only happens when you stop trying to win. A lot of gems in this one. So I highly recommend checking out that particular episode along with the rest. So go listen to Entrepreneurs on Fire wherever you get your podcasts. Hey guys, if you listen to the Hustle Daily Show on Google Podcasts, we want to let you know that the option will no longer be available pretty soon. Google is sunsetting its podcast app sometime in early 2024 in favor of YouTube Music, and we want to give you a heads up before it's too late since that time's almost here. The Hustle Daily Show is available everywhere and anywhere that you listen to podcasts like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you're using YouTube Music, we are there as well. If you're an Android fan, there are plenty of apps like Overcast, Pocket Casts, Player FM, and more. So just search for us wherever you decide to listen to your favorite podcasts.